Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a quick look at my uh, Browning High Power. This is the final design by John Browning. Uh, he actually died before the completion of this pistol. Um, it was finished by somebody else. I can't pronounce that guy's name, so I'm not going to try it. Um, basically, just going to take a quick look. I'm not going to go into the history on it. I mean, there's plenty of uh, places where you can find the history, but this one in general comes with two magazines lock, a spent casing for, I guess, whatever states that require it, plus the manual. All right. So let's take a quick look. Now, when I actually bought this, I bought this as a spur of the moment purchase because I haven't seen too many of these around and from what I can tell, they're hard to come by down here. Um, See, the gun is loaded, nothing in the chamber or in the mag. Um, this one in general is the blued finish with the walnut grips. The other one I saw had, was black with, uh, I guess they were plastic grips or polymer grips, whatever they were. Um, this one was a little bit more because of the blued finish, I guess, and the, the walnut grips, so I went with that one. Um, that and the, the guy was telling me that they only get like a couple a year. So basically I found this and I bought it, plain and simple. It was actually good too because when I bought it, it had, Browning was running a promotion like, uh, uh, what, what the hell was it, a tax relief program. So basically you'd send in the, uh, you know, the receipt and all that other crap and I guess they gave you like 8% of whatever the gun cost back as a tax relief type deal. Plus the gun shop that I bought it from was having 5% off so I wound up getting like 13% off of the final price of the gun. Anyway, enough, enough babbling about stupidity. Um, this gun itself is, uh, is actually pretty nice. One thing I don't like about it is that when it is cocked and ready to fire without the magazine being in it, it doesn't fire. It's got a magazine disconnect. So, I'm not, I don't plan on using this as a home defense gun. Basically, I bought it as like something to collect. As soon as you put the magazine back in, then you can fire the weapon. Just like that. The trigger pull on this, I believe they say is about seven pounds, I think. I'm not really sure. I don't have a gauge to actually test it out, but it feels about that. Um, sights on this gun are three dot fixed sights. You can get these with the adjustable rear sight. I haven't seen them around here, but they are available. This also has an ambidextrous safety. And with this one in particular, the, the lever itself is the same size on both sides of the gun. It's not like one size bigger than the other. Um, let's see, it's chambered in nine millimeter. It's got this, you know, the stainless steel barrel. The external extractor, um, the magazine, well, if you live in a free state, you get 13 rounds in the mag. I only get 10, but anyway, the magazine has this little spring on the back, which assists on the ejecting of the magazine, which is pretty nice. Um, let's see what else. The breakdown on this gun is actually pretty simple. If you look, it's got, that's for your uh, safety right there, but if you look right over here, there's another notch. So basically what you do is, you can pull the slide all the way back to that notch like that. And then you would pop it out with pushing this pin down takes out your slide release and then you would pull the slide back, lower the safety and then the slide comes right off and this is your guide, your guide rod and spring and your barrel and if you're familiar with 1911s, you can see that the lockup on this barrel is the same as the 1911. Very similar in design, except for the fact that it doesn't have that little 
lug on the bottom. And I believe this is a five inch barrel on these. And then to put it back together, basically you just do them in reverse order. Just like that. Put it back. Do the same thing, then you would lock it right into that slot. Put the pin in. Just be careful when you put it in because you can scratch it if you, uh, just like the idiot scratch on a 1911. Goes right in. Pull it back, drop the safety, and see, actually function check, check the weapon. That's it. It's pretty simple. Not really much more I could say about it, just that I just don't like that damn magazine disconnect. Either way. Oh, and the other thing is, like I said, it's uh, got the blue finish on it, which I guess whoever owns a blue gun knows about the fingerprints and, sh and stuff. Like, you get fingerprints on it like crazy. I've actually tried this Renaissance wax to actually, you know, polish it. This actually helps with the fingerprints. It actually wipes off a lot nicer. Basically what you do, just show you real quick, take the Renaissance wax, just put a little bit on a towel, and then you just like buff it on like regular wax. Let it sit for a few seconds, and then you can just wipe it right off. I mean, I've seen this from a couple, couple different people on YouTube. This is one of those things where they say like a little goes a long way, so you basically you're just gonna take it, rub it, so it's barely on your finger, or barely on a towel, and you just apply it, just like that. I mean, this I think I've used about like seven or eight times. It barely even looks like I even used any anything. I mean, this isn't the only firearm I used it on, but anyway. I think that's about it. I mean, not really much more you can say about this about this firearm besides, you know, you can see some similarities that it has with the 1911. I mean, obviously it doesn't have the uh, the grip safety on it. Um, it's chambered in 9 instead of 45. You know, I mean, it's a nice looking gun. I've I wanted one for you know, I've seen, I've seen, I've worn one for a little while. I'm not, I'm not saying I've been dying for one lately, but I just happened to find it and bought it. Because, like I said, for some strange reason around here, you can't find these things. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the area I live in. Who knows? Uh, let's see, anything else we can say about it? I don't know. One thing I forgot to mention too is the recoil on this gun is actually very controllable. Um, I mean, I don't have that many, I have about 150 rounds through it right now. So, I mean, I'm, this is just going off of what I shot, but the recoil is very nice. It's it's very, the follow-up shots are very, very easy to do. Um, it's just a very nice gun. It's very nice looking, like I said. Just John Browning design. It's, uh, I mean, there's really not much more you can really say about it. It's definitely one that I'm not, don't intend to sell. It's, uh, basically just a, so I'm going to keep in my collection and shoot whenever I can. I like it a lot. Um, I mean, I know they are pricey when you actually do find one, but hey, you, you pay, basically, you get what you pay for. And uh, you definitely get a good quality gun for the money. That's about it. So, I mean, the other thing is too, I mean, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, just starting out with this, so if I sound like a babbling idiot from time to time, that's basically why. Um, appreciate, the while. appreciate you guys watching. Share with your friends, thumbs up. You know, subscribe. Uh, going to try to make some more videos. Hopefully, get some shooting videos too. Um, I just 
gotta get to a range that can actually uh, allow me to, to film. Either that or I gotta start sneaking a camera in. But uh, like I said, thanks a lot guys for watching and I'll talk to you soon.